Hello everybody. We're getting a new certification next week. So I figured it would be fun to kind of like take you through the process of continuing education. Every certification is a little bit different. The one that I'm getting next Saturday into Sunday is FRC or functional range conditioning. It's basically like a mobility cert. So we're gonna talk a little bit about it as I put on some makeup for the day. I don't know why, but I am like incredibly broken out right now in pimples. I think it's stress related, but that's not what this video is about. Okay, if you are a personal trainer, a coach, whatever, depending on like your overarching certification, you need continuing education credits to retain that title. For instance, for me, I am a NASM certified personal trainer. So I need just two credits of continuing education every two years. Point one of that is renewing my CPR certification, which I'm actually doing tomorrow. I've really put this off because I think it's Oh no, I think it's due in like a week. Now NASM is a pretty basic personal training certification. Doesn't mean that it's bad by any means, but I would say it's like most people's intro or starter cert. But again, to retain that title as a CPT, you must do continuing education. Right now, I am trying to get the certifications that I think will help my clients and members of the Fit Club the most. And sometimes it gets tough because I really have to weigh the balance of like, this really interests me and would be cool, but wouldn't have a lot of benefit for my clients. So I think you do have to find that balance of like something that interests you, but also will be helpful to your clients. I think that the more and more years I put into this, the less I have to be like super, super strategic about my continuing education. But right now I, I feel like I'm still checking off a lot of the basic stuff that I wanna put into my belt. So one of those things is mobility work. FRC is super respected. A lot of physical therapists, occupational therapists will also take their courses. This is also where kin stretch comes from if you've ever taken a kin stretch class. But again, if we think about my demographic, it is a lot of people who are getting older and they're like, hmm, things don't feel the same anymore. I would like to make sure I don't feel like shit every day. And mobility really helps with that. I have a very basic understanding of mobility. A lot of my understanding has been picked up from other certifications, but also just from like taking other coaches, classes and courses throughout the years. So I'm really excited to learn like the source material from FRC and then figure out like how I fit this into my own business. So one of the things you have to be careful of when doing continuing education is like, you don't want to overhaul your entire approach to training. You know, ideally what you're doing is taking this knowledge from another source and then like sprinkling it in and just enhancing the way that you train and program and, and structure things and work with people. I'm going to finish all my makeup and then I actually have to print out my like textbook, I guess. Every cert is different in terms of like the certification process, the different tools and things that they give you. But I figured it would be fun just to kind of take you behind the scenes and see how this one works. I should have said it earlier, not sponsored at all. All right, face is done. Let's look at the course outline. All right, so here's their website. I have access to the FRC material. I'm not gonna show you the actual like material because this is all their intellectual property. This is something that I found interesting and off-putting. So you cannot access any of these lectures until two weeks before the live seminar. I'm just gonna show you the live lectures really quick. I'm supposed to prep with one, two, three, before day one of my seminar, which is Saturday the 4th. It's in exactly one week from today. And then before day two, which is the next day, I'm supposed to watch all of these. This is two hours, just the intro video. I think these are all probably about an hour. This is a lot of, of shit to digest. And then all of these other videos open up after the seminar is done. And then they'll like send us a link to take a test or something. I just find that a little weird and not ideal. I was like off from work all last week. So I didn't want to do anything continuing education wise. So I'm gonna have to fit in, to be honest, I'm gonna fit in all of these lectures before even the first day because I know there's no way if I'm there from 8.30 to 4.30 on Saturday next week, that I'm coming home and watching four hours of lectures. That's not happening. So I'm gonna get it all done beforehand. But this is kind of odd. Like every other time I've done a certification online like this, where we have a live seminar, you've gotten all of the material like right when you pay for it. So I'm not gonna lie, I don't really like that. 
<laughs> I'm gonna show you how I mapped out studying for this. I'm basically like doing a lecture a day, but depending on how like demonstration heavy these videos are, I'm gonna try and listen to this first one today while I'm cleaning and hopefully that works. Hopefully I don't have to like sit and watch it too much. But let me show you how I mapped out my studying. All right, so it starts with today. So I'm gonna watch the intro video, hopefully. And then honestly, I just put a video on every day. This is two videos, wish me luck. And I'll luckily just be able to move these around depending. So you can also see I have a very busy week. Ah! But I feel like that's why it would have been good to like give us more time. I don't, the only thing I can think of is like, I don't know, they don't need to like steal their IP. But like, you, I don't know, it's very odd to me. If anyone else has ever done this cert, let me know what you think about it. Anyway, this has been long enough. We're gonna, we're gonna start cleaning a little and see if we can listen to this lecture. And then we'll come back tomorrow and I'm actually doing my CPR cert tomorrow too. So maybe we'll talk about that as well. Ooh, look at the gun. <laughs> All right, bye. two of our FRC weekend. Yesterday was great. <laughs> we pretty much spent the entire day talking about CARS, which stands for Controlled Articular Rotations, giant hair. And it's basically used as like an assessment tool slash a daily practice just to keep the joints nice and mobile. But it's a great assessment tool to see where someone might have restricted joint mobility. And then today we're gonna learn the different ways to fix that. So I'm very excited. You know, yesterday in the seminar, someone had the question of like, you know, when you're watching someone do their cars or watching someone during their assessment, well, how are we supposed to like know exactly what's wrong, what's right? And you know, the answer, isn't the one that you want to hear, but I do agree it's the right answer. Practice, time and practice. If I think back to like when I first started training people and that let's say I just saw someone like go into a squat. 99% of the time I was probably like, yeah, you're bending, you're coming back up, great squat. Now, when I see 99% of people squat, I'm like, okay, that needs to be fixed, that can be fixed, we can improve on that, let's fix this real quick. And that's just because my eye is so much more trained now. So I feel like that's just a good lesson for all of us trainers or practitioners who's ever watching this, you gotta put in the, what did they say yesterday? They said you have to put in the ignorance hours because your eye just doesn't know yet. So it's gonna take you a little bit longer to figure out like what you're seeing and then what to prescribe for it. I feel like I've told this story before, but when I got my first group fitness job that wasn't dance cardio related, it was at a mega former studio. And I used to practice all the time. Like I would practice cueing exercises, teaching full classes. I would wait till the studio was empty for the night and I would go in and I would do the lights. I would do the sound. I would wear a mic. I would have my pre-class ritual where I would go from mega former to mega former asking people about injuries, how they're doing today, but there's no one there. And then I would teach a full class. Like with my timer, doing the class, fixing imaginary corrections. I definitely looked a little insane, but it was so new to me that that's what I needed to do. I needed to prepare and practice. And if you're, you know, wanting to be a trainer or fitness instructor and you're like, oh, that's way too much work, might not be the right field for you. <laughs> You know, the only way that we can expect to be great coaches and get great results out of people, whatever that result means, is by investing that time in our own practice, whether it is with continuing education or whether it is just by like putting in the practice, the repetition. So that being said, I'm definitely going to be offering like a free mobility assessment to all of my private clients. I already have that like carved out in my schedule and I have to send that email out. So I just think it's going to help me serve them better and I can send them home with like a 
little piece of homework that they should be doing every day. And hopefully that will just like enhance our experience more. I'm also thinking of like maybe offering a few like free mobility assessments TBD. So I kind of want to get some reps in on people how, who like I don't know how their bodies move at all. I have a really good idea already of what's going on with my current clients. I feel like strangers that would be more helpful. So keep your eyes peeled for that. It would be free and it would be purely selfish for me to get better at this system. So anyway, I'm going to finish getting ready, packing up my bag, finishing up this last seminar that I'm watching, and then um, we will finish up day two, baby. I am running home because it is the Eagles Cowboys game. I will update you on the rest of the cert at some other point, but right now, we gotta go sport. Go birds, baby. I passed my exam. All right, let's chat really quickly. I think the funny thing about like continuing education and continuing to learn things is that hopefully you're never looking back and being like, oh my gosh, everything I learned was wrong. Instead, hopefully whatever you learn next simply enhances what you learned before. I feel like when I started out and I feel like this is the way for a lot of coaches, you start out and it's like, this is true and this is false. And then as you learn more, you kind of pick it apart and it's like, it's not necessarily true and false. There's more nuance to it and the more and more you learn the more and more nuance you have I'm super super excited to start to implement all of the stuff with my clients so just keep your eyes peeled for more information about what I've been learning I have to start practicing it on myself too if you're interested in taking a course with FRC I'm gonna link everything down below if you have any questions about it if you're another coach please let me know make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out I will see you all in the next one